Welcome to the 153rd episode of News Dump, where we run through the hottest topics in the Lewis County news scene and discuss. It's Monday, Tuesday, August 15th. I'm local man Aaron Vantile, joined by Chronicle Editor-in-Chief Eric Schwartz. And we're joined in spirit by sponsors Summit Funding and The Roof Doctor. And we got a special for you guys today. Might as well call us the two-man group. <laughs> That's pretty good. Yeah, there is there is, but two of us. Uh, it's a skeleton crew. One week after you you announced how full your heart was from there being a full podcast room. I've they never just, said something they just like that. didn't come back. Uh, yeah, where are Crawler and Isabel at? Uh, I don't know if I'm at liberty to say, but they're getting their engagement photos taken. Ooh. <laughs> you know they're getting married, right? I, I hadn't heard that. Yeah, they are. Oh, congratulations to the happy couple. Yeah. <laughs> this no, break, I, I, breaking I, news. <laughs> Seriously, congratulations. And don't invite yourself to their wedding. I've seen that a couple times. Me invite myself to a wedding? No, I've seen it okay, in the wild. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I'm sure you remember wedding crashing used to be a thing. Yeah. Yeah. All and, right. And we've got to hurry up and get this thing done so you and I can go watch live as our queen, Little Miss Friendly, is chosen at the fairgrounds. I can't believe we didn't broadcast live from there. I, we should have. We should have been up on the stage, and we should have been able to announce who the winner is. Uh, that is one of our first preambles. The fair is here. Oh, it's here. Yeah, so any, hot right now. Any breaking news from the hot, hot fair? Uh, no, they did opening ceremonies this morning. Uh, Jared did his once annual. I asked him to start on one end of the fair and do a live Facebook video all throughout the fair. Um, and he noted that the temperature was 95 plus degrees while he was doing it. Did he ask for hazard pay? Uh, no. He never, what a trooper. He never does. He never does. He, 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 I don't know if he knows what that is. Or oh, he probably let's just would have keep asked that secret between now. us. Yeah. So are you going to go to the fair? Uh, I don't know. Probably not. Um, I heard that the community is unanimous this year, that this is a great fair and that it's not lacking anything that former fairs had. It's got everything every other fair has <laughs> no had. No one's complaining. Not a single complaint. No, people are happy across the board. I'm going to go on Saturday, I think. I think it's going to be cooler then. Yeah, it should cool down by then. Um, yeah, I don't know. I might pop in for some some fair food or something. Yeah. You know, the, 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 the one complaint I have ever had about the fair, you got to pay to park. I don't like that. Yeah, but you can help a community group while you're doing it. We should yeah, do but a parking lot for the news po- the podcast next time. Yeah, we should. I'm still looking for the booze sponsor. We uh, the sponsorship we really need is we we have been discussing this offer. I have been discussing this offer with myself. But if somebody if we have a really you know uh, particularly giving patron that wants us to do a personal podcast just for them, we will go to their house and just do a live podcast. No mics, just just we'll about just what we and, see. Yeah, we'll just hang out at their house and talk to them for forty five minutes. Oh man, that's big. Yeah, like that. Uh, we haven't discussed pricing yet, but, you nope. know, low four figures. The other reason it could be just me and you in here is you could have offended Jared and Isabel with your potty mouth last week and the week before that and the week oh, before yeah. that. We yeah, I had a, 153 weeks in a row, I think. <laughs> we did have a very kind and polite podcast listener um, who uh, just asked us to curse a little bit less. And I think that I told her it was reasonable and I will do my part, but that uh, it would be harder since I don't even know you're barely employed here. Um, it's true. Thus, we can barely control you. Mm-hmm. That's um, just the way to I get like you it. to curse. But just know each time you do, she said that she didn't say she wouldn't listen anymore. She just said she would have to listen at a different time when children are not around. What if we just do like an earmuffs thing? I mean, we could do that. Or you could censor it. We could have a censored and uncensored version, PG-13 and R. Yeah, that's that's and a lot can, of work we're not going to put An occasional in. mature audiences only. Yeah, I kind of like that. Uh, the other preamble, we've got Jeff Goldblum. Oh, yeah. I thought that was going to be Hero of the Week material, personally. He still could be. But, he should uh, be. But we got two photo submissions of Jeff Goldblum and Chehalis over the weekend. Uh, Life uh, Finds a Way was what you put in the comment. Pretty mm-hmm. good. Pretty mm-hmm. good. I also said submit your own photos if you have them, and then I wrote faster, faster, must go faster, Mm -hmm. which is from two movies. You were so worried about whether or not you could post the photos, you didn't (laughs) stop to think about whether you should. Uh, I did receive criticism that I didn't include The Fly, which I've never seen. Help me, help me. I've never seen it. Is it good? Uh, it's pretty gross. This is like breakout role, though, according to the commenters I saw. Yeah, it's him and, uh... Oh, Gina Davis, I think. Yeah. He turns into a fly. I don't want to spoil anything for you, but... Just an actual fly. It's not yeah. like a superhero Like movie. a really big fly. Really? Yeah. And it's a, it's a good motion picture, you're telling me. I mean, it's... Yeah, it's this good. Concept. I mean, I probably wouldn't work without Jeff Goldblum, then. 
Yeah, he's uh, it's Jeff Goldblum at his hottest, you could say. Well, he's still pretty hot at 70. He's a good-looking <laughs> good guy. Looking dude. But yeah, he uh, was doing shows. If you didn't know, he's a jazz pianist. Of course he is. Uh, apparently a very good one. And his band was going from Portland to Seattle, and he had a hankering for some Joe, and got off in Chehalis, and uh, by all accounts was just a very pleasant gentleman, which is exactly what you you expect. I like, like, he could have just sent anybody in the band in there to get coffee and, like, not had any kind of uh, disturbance at all, drive through. But he's like, you know what? The people need Jeff Goldblum today. And damn it, they got him. I think it's awesome, and it, it's always nice, not, not to be too corny, but to have a story where, like, 99.9% of people, regardless of their views, are just like, that's really cool. Jeff Goldblum's awesome. Yeah. I didn't see one person in there critical. And, uh, yeah, I wish I was there. I would have liked to meet him as well. And... The second time making the paper, at least the second time, um, because he was in Tonino in 2017 to film a movie, The Mountain, I think it was called. Yeah, independent film. Never saw it, but uh, I'm sure it's on Hulu for a while. I'm sure it's out by now. But uh, what is your favorite Jeff Goldblum movie? Uh, Probably Thor Ragnarok. Thor Ragnarok, huh? Yeah, yeah, I like Ragnarok. But I mean, is Goldblum ever bad? No, no, I don't. I don't think so. I have. I've yet to see that. Anyways. He was pretty good and unexpected in Ragnarok, but uh, I'm partial to Independence Day. Uh, I also liked him in uh, Grand Budapest Hotel. Oh, yeah, yeah. In that. I forgot that he was in that. I think he's in... Uh, oh, yeah, he's in... I was just watching Asteroid City today, and he's in that. He's in a ton of stuff, because I was trying to figure out, you know, cross-generational how to pepper in a few different movies that would hit all the spots, and I missed. I just hit the 90s. Oh. So, but, yeah. Yeah, and this has been Goldblum Dump. Uh, if you see on. him, let us know. <laughs> yeah. We would like pictures. Uh, please send to Schwartz all your photos of you with someone you think is Jeff Goldblum. <laughs> I mean, he's pretty unmistakable. I can't believe he's 70, though, judging by the pictures. He's good. So, um, uh, Tim Filer, I hope, is successful. He mentioned in the comments he would like to book the band at uh, the McFiler Chehalis Theater, and people were very excited about that prospect. Yeah, I'd go see him. Might as well. I mean, he stopped in Chehalis anyways. Just yeah. break out the band, do a little number, head on up to Seattle. Yeah. Uh, Shall we get into news items? We shall. All right. First up, Lewis County Seniors Board revising prayer, comma, political discussion policy following outcry. Uh, Carol Brock, who runs the senior centers, published an advertorial which stated their policy was now no prayer, political political talk at senior centers, and people became quite unhappy. The agency about aging in the area's administration came back and said, nope, you've got to let these old cranks ramble on about prayer and God and which ethnic caregivers are stealing their cash to their heart's content. Oh, come on. That's offensive. Uh, Well, to the caregivers, yeah. Uh, Look, let the old people talk about whatever they want, but also, like, just a bunch of olds. (laughs) What am I supposed to say to that? That, Yes, it is important. Just a... How... Oh, that is just... (laughs) I am high, I'm highly, I almost cursed just then. It's the not for time, my promise to the listener. When was the last time you were at a senior center? Uh, probably as a reporter going there to do a story of some sort. They'll have speakers there, ironically political speakers, that will often be there after this policy was announced, I believe. Uh, and I know that there were some caveats, but um, Marie Gluson Camp Perez did a town hall in the Packwood Senior Center, I believe, last week. Mm-hmm. Um, so It's our next so item, actually. Like, yeah, so that's still allowed. Um, no, I kind of I agree that I think they should be able to talk about whatever they want to talk about within reason, right? On just about anything. I don't think they won't necessarily want to be holding a revival there or something like that. But I mean, if yeah. somebody wants to stand up and pray, I I don't mind. We have received like letters from folks defending the senior center as well. Uh, public official wise, it seems most have been opposed to it, but we've really only heard from the two commissioners, I believe, Swope and uh, Brummer. Yeah, and uh, the former. Um, we had an update on this story headline, uh, Lewis County seniors president expands on plan to roll back. No prayer rural commissioner seeks to oust her from advisory group. So as their representative, I believe I've got the story here in front of me on the area agency on aging. Let's see. Uh, Swope is the county's representative. Um, and he just spoke about, uh, let's see. Swope wrote the political discussions are encouraged by the Lewis County, uh, Lewis Mason Thurston area thing on aging, and he says, quote, Miss Brock has broken the trust of the seniors and Office of Aging. She is appointed to advocate for seniors. Um, so that's a little update that's at Cronline. And then just because both have released statements, uh, that both being Swope and Brock, you can read their full statements along with that story on Cronline. Well, it's nice that Swope will stand up and finally put his 
foot down about somebody not doing their job, how they should be ousted. I don't it's know. It's not like Carol Brock botched a murder investigation. It just it seemed the whole thing is, remains like the policy hasn't officially been changed yet, to my knowledge. the The whole thing just seems like odd to me. Like and it came out of Senior Dynamics, is where it originated. Brock wrote a column saying that this was the new policy. Um, it just I don't know. It, it sounded like someone complaining pr- prompted this. Um, yeah. If that's the bar, though, shouldn't people complaining that they can't pray also prompt a reverse statement? Like, I there just didn't seem to be any order to it and <laughs> didn't really do a great job of explaining, like, listen, you you can still have grace. Like, you want to pray around your table, that's fine. We're just yeah. trying to make it not a part of any official offerings. Yeah, it seemed to me like... Praying is fine. Having a moment of silence is fine. But like demanding other people pray with you or engage in political discussion with you was probably would have been a more clear thing for them to say. And I like that's what I initially thought was at the heart of the yeah thing. I don't know. And then there was just you know the the beginning of the column in Senior Dynamics was talking about LGBTQ plus acceptance and how you know we are going to recognize Pride Month and things like that. So I just think it kind of muddled some issues, and if it had maybe been clearly... Um, I guess when I read it, my thought was, well, something happened here. It'd be interesting to know like what this is trying to address. Like It was, it seemed like it was officially written to a specific situation that was not included in the write-up. Yeah. Like some events, complaints, things like that. I don't know. But also, like, this just got way more action than it should have. Yeah. Like, does it, like, I, no, I don't no, want to be like, you should just handle this in-house, but like, come on. Yeah, nothing better going on. I don't know. I Gotta think to score some political I, points. I think it, it was just the. I think it should have been handled in house before it ended up a column in Senior Dynamics, and I think it would all been a lot cleaner. Yeah, but um, it spilled out into the open that way, and I mean, um, I know at the first protest last Monday there was it's she see, Brock seemed to be alluding to uh, publisher Chad Taylor's column somehow causing this uproar, but. That didn't make sense to me. The, there was a prayer circle scheduled the Friday before, like yeah. before that column was even filed. Um, so I just wanted to note that that too didn't really make a whole lot of sense to me. I think the seniors were upset, and I think if you're going to take their prayer. You should announce that you're taking their guns next and see how that goes. Can you take a gun to the senior center? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> if you said no guns, though, they wouldn't be happy about it. No. Somebody's got a gun in there. All right. We are 12 and a half minutes into this podcast, and we are at long last going to talk about somebody under the age of 70. And my God, it's a politician. Why do you hate old people? Older people. I don't elderly. hate them. I just, you know, like... Experienced Americans. Congressman Glusicom Perez hears from local, comma, federal concerns in Packwood Town Hall at a senior center. Oh, damn it. Uh, MGP went to the ELC and the TLDR is MGP is DTF. If you mean Democrat touting fiscal responsibility. Jeez, that was a lot. That was a stretch, huh? That was a lot. She talked about all kinds of stuff. Um, Isabel, I believe covered this. And at one point while discussing student loan forgiveness, MGP said the amount of money that is being spent on publishing like shiny magazines and recruitment efforts and advertising has really ballooned while looking directly at Isabel and making a throat cutting motion. Oh, jeez. Yeah. Wild stuff. And she's not even here to refute what you're saying. So. I know. It definitely happened then. She should definitely be here next time. Um, but, yeah, I don't know. She covered a lot of stuff. She got into it with some people. But, like, you know, in an ab- like above board way, congenial maybe. Yeah, I uh, I like that she's holding town halls. Um, years and years ago, I was a, I wasn't a Remain a fan, personally, just to be honest. But uh, Jamie Herr Butler kind of stopped the town halls after they came became a little combative, rightfully or wrongfully so. Um, and I like that she's getting in the district, not just in the district, but all the way out in Packwood. Um, and uh, I hope she has one in Centralia soon. I think that'd be well attended. Yeah, yeah. But she's getting around the district, and it's it's one of those drumbeat things when you get the news release now. It's like, we'll hold her ninth town hall, so eventually we're going to have a very large number of Well, when she halls. gets to 153 town halls, let us Call know. Call me, yeah. She should come on the podcast, though. That'd be fun. Yeah. She uh, wouldn't. She'd have a hard time with the cursing rule. I, I think she would be based great on at her that. past interviews. Uh, next item. Uh, oh boy, State Rep. Jim Walsh elected as State Republican Party Chair. You know I mean, how you'd in, be excited about this. You know how in high school movies, like the teacher asks a question and the class kiss ass immediately throws their hand in the air and just wants more than anything to be called on because they know the answer and the teacher pretends not to see them and goes, anyone else? Does anyone else please want to volunteer for this assignment? Literally anyone other than Jim Walsh? No, please. Anyone would look better than this. You with the January 6th tour guide shirt. No? What about you there in the white shirt and black slacks with a pitcher of water? You're just a waiter? Damn it. Ah, oh, Christ. Fine, Jim 
Uh, you're up. Do you think that's how it went down? Uh, I think Republicans are just demanding the overwhelming majority here in the Evergreen State take them seriously with a move like this. Yeah, I mean, I, I understand what you're saying. There's the Yellow Star of David thing, which was included in the Seattle Times write-up that As we published. Um, yeah, I don't disagree with that either. Um, there was some positive feedback. The Washington mainstream Republican chair, I believe, uh, said he has the ability and the passion to unite Washington Republicans on all stripes, from the grassroots to the elected level. Um, and then talked about how in the state house representatives, he was known for leadership, speaking skills, power to move people with the strengths of his convictions. And, uh, he owes allegiance to no faction. I don't know. Yeah. He moves he might, people. He, he sits down at a table and people get up and move. He's trying to rile up people. I mean, he's not the, the role of a party. You want to get him up to vote. Um, he's going to say stuff. He'll say something provocative. He is a good speaker though. If you've yeah, ever, he is. I don't think I like, I don't think he's an idiot by any stretch of the imagination. I just think he's, yeah, I've said it before, but to, uh, your caricature, I think, is a word you've used before. Yeah, he is. Uh, next item. Residents, local and state agencies raise concerns over the proposed Skookumchuck Commerce Center in Centralia. And it is time for us, once again, bang the table. <laughs> Not in my backyard. Uh, good work on this by Jeremy Ashbeck, who did the homework and thinks this sucks. And Mark Wesley, a Centralia city councilor, who also thinks it's not great. Uh, this is a big, like, warehouse deal on Reynolds, correct? Yes. Kind of by Blakesley Junction? Yeah, it's that area that was annexed that we talked about, I believe, yeah. last year. Um, and it is massive. Uh, and along with who you list, I mean, Kyle Heaton at the port also was uh, questioning the traffic analysis, didn't take a look at uh, Harrison and um, Reynolds, which makes really good sense. You would want to know what happened there. Mm -hmm. Um, but I mean, they weren't the department of fish and wildlife had questions. It seems like the city of Centralia is not really in favor of this. Um, and the piece that just frankly, we have not really uh, nailed yet. In my opinion is just, uh, according to Ashbeck, who has done the most research on this, that they don't have to go before the city council to get approval for this eventually, as long as they, you know, pass the, the SEPA, the state environmental protection act. Um, inspection and all that, uh, and I'm not going to pretend to be have any sort of expertise on it. It sounds like the agencies that would be submitting information for that SEPA are all questioning yeah. it at a high level. So maybe it, you know, maybe it doesn't happen. But as we discussed, um, and as Ashbeck has said, that is there is a water flow there off of Coffee Creek when the Skookumchuck floods. Uh, I drove through it in January 2022. We've all seen it, and it it does cut directly through where they're planning to put these. So um, yeah. they say that stormwater ponds uh, and other mitigation would fix that. Um, but I mean, I don't know. It's just, there's two enormous warehouses, one 300,000 square feet, one almost 500,000 square feet. Um, it just it has, I have a hard time understanding how that wouldn't affect flooding for one. And then the other concerns are like what the aquifer and fish and, yeah, and like traffic is messed up there usually anyway because there's several trains blocking Reynolds at any time of day. Uh, also, like, what about the Port of Centralia? What about the Port of Chehalis? There's the Benaroya development in Windlock. Like, there's other spaces for this kind of thing built specifically for this kind of thing. Yeah, I'm not a developer. I don't know the thinking that goes onto it. I know all of it comes down to money, I'm sure. And yeah. maybe it's an affordable piece of land that I don't know. I, w I will see. We're still reporting on it, and we'll have, we will have more as it moves forward. Well, this company is going to have to pay me an awful lot of money to get me to sign off on this and stop bitching about it. I'm gonna There's my to... one swear word for the... Oh, you could have at least been I'm a just warning. kidding. There's going to be more. Oh, jeez. Uh, yeah, I better get to work on that building my house on top of my house project. You're going to need a new roof if mm -hmm. you do such a thing. And to get one, you'll have to call our friends at The Roof Doctor, which you can visit at... TheRoofDoctor.com. You can give them a call at 360-506-6432 or locally at 736-0246. And the Roof Doctor wants to know, is your roof under the weather? Ooh, that was good. Nice yeah. and clean and tight. Uh, the Roof Doctor and Shayless awaits your house call. And of course, no matter what, they will come out, climb up on your roof, dance about there a little bit, give you a show, then give you a free estimate. You think they would do it for a 500,000 square foot warehouse? Not if we ask them not to. Yeah, well, that's true. I'm sure they're devoted to this this podcast. Uh, but yeah, The Roof Doctor, great sponsor. Give them a call if you have any roofing needs. Next news item. 
Centralia City Council passed this ordinance allowing police, comma, parks director to ban groups and individual from parks. Uh, originally, only parks director Amy Buckler could ban people from the park, but police chief Stacy Denham had his ice cream cone knocked to the grass by an unsupervised child last Saturday and begged the council to give him banning privileges as well. Um, it's not true. I, you don't know that it's not true. I do know that it's not true. Are you sure? I'm positive. When was the last time you talked to Denham about ice cream in the park? It's been a while. Was it, maybe it happened at... I don't think I ever have, actually. Centre, like America's Night Out a few weeks ago. How do you know? Maybe oh. it was a hot dog. Maybe it was both. It's fiction. Uh, I don't have a problem with this move, but like it is pretty funny. Uh, the incident where a guy drove through the park a few weeks ago was a catalyst. It caused nearly $900 in damage to the lawn and was used as an example of something that would get somebody 86 from the park. According to Buckler, I believe this is in the meeting, she said, uh, this derailed our parks maintenance staff from other important projects they had to do that day, which uh, other important projects for the park staff. Yeah, there's Grow up. Oh, come on. Oh, weed whacking around the backstop oh. at Riverside Park couldn't wait until Tuesday. Yeah. They do important work. You but do like, know something of pressing work. So. This, isn't like, this isn't like life or death. I mean... Uh, this is the, yeah, this is like when your friend calls to help them move and you're laying on the couch watching murder. She wrote covered in Cheeto dust with a coffee table full of empty beer cans. And you're like, ah, I don't know. Kind of got a lot on my plate. It was like that level of, we got to get out there. I mean, I had questions after reading the story, which you usually want to answer all those with the story, but like, uh, what are they going to do exactly? <laughs> if they're like, Hey, you're banned. And that person comes back. They're just going to tell them they're banned again. Like, and who? Like, it's not like the park. Direct- have a guard down there, right? That's what I mean. There's like the parks director is not at the park at any time. Well, maybe she should be. The, the police and new the, office in the gazebo. Many different areas of parks where you can hide <laughs> out. Like, yeah. I just I, I don't that's know. That's kind of the beauty of a park. Some would say. Um, they should Good have for hiding out. Should ban you from the parks. I, Insulting our park, parks and rec staff. <laughs> No, the Parks and Rec staff do great work all across the city on all the parks, but just like the, I just that that bit of it was kind of funny. I mean, I wasn't going that far, but (laughs) you say so. (laughs) They do, they do nice work. Yeah, yeah. And we do have nice parks. Um, Didn't a tree just fall in the park? Yeah, last night a tree fell at George Washington Park just after Founders Day. Hmm. Think he wasn't happy, perhaps? Maybe. Think he knocked it down himself? I don't know. It's like a night at, the night at the museum situation over there. That, the car driving through. Mm. Mm. Yeah, a lot going on. Is Founders Day on the list? Because that was cool. We could throw that in there. Founders Day was held over the weekend for the first time. A new Centralia holiday. If you're not from Centralia or in Centralia, you can't celebrate it. It's only for us. Um, and they were celebrating George and Mary Jane Washington in George Washington Park on Saturday. Uh, Chronicle columnist, historian, author Brian Mitke was there. It looked like he did a little playing on the guitar. Yeah. He had a, a ballad to George Washington, I believe. So he's written an original piece, which I would like to hear. Yeah, that sounds great. Uh, were you there? No, no, just the coverage. We had coverage. Well, you're such a big fan of George Washington and specifically Mary Jane. Yeah. Yeah. I am a, I'm very big into the history. <laughs> is that a pot joke? What is that? <laughs> Uh, no, but I thought it was fun, and I thought the, the Centralia Downtown Association coming up with the idea for that holiday was great, and as has been a lot of the CDA's work over the past year or so. Yeah, the CDA, uh, good organization. Yeah, they. I mean, it's been around forever, and I, I'm not speaking above anyone in the group now, but it had its problems over the years. We don't need to go into them, but there was there was road there, there was speed bumps, I guess you could call them. Yeah, issues. Um, but this group, I mean, it seems like they've just been doing incredible work. Yeah, every time, like on the weekend, I'll be driving through that town. I'm like, God, what the hell's going on now? Yeah, they always got shake my fist, going. but really, I'm shaking my fist at commerce. You know what else? Support like? their banners. Their banners are top notch. Banners are banging. My favorite of the banners is the new one. I think it's new. I just noticed it. That is, as you're going down Tower, it's like I'm going to get it wrong, but it basically says, "Keep going, more businesses this way." It's yeah. right when it starts to look a little rougher than the downtown. Yeah, some tour. of the businesses a little further down the road there uh, had like some sidewalk stale stuff going on mm-hmm. Saturday. Yeah, no, that's that's neat to see. There's people out here. Yeah, there's that one business that brings in people. It brings in vendors. Oh, what is Strange it? Strange something. The or, Emporium or some something like that. Yeah. Uh, yeah, they've got some oddities, and you know, if you need like some steampunk goggles or whatever, and stop in there. Yeah, it's the Victorian Showcase and Steampunk Emporium. It's at Hell 529 yeah. North Tower Avenue. It looks mm-hmm. it was super cool business, but yeah, lots of interesting spots down there. All right, shall we move on? Sure. Uh, Lewis County Commissioner's finalized contract with new county manager. His name is Ryan Barrett. He starts August 28th. 
He'll make $177,000 a year. He currently oversees more than 100 employees as captain of the South Correctional Entity in Des Moines. He grew up in the area, served on the Centralia City Council from 2008 to 2009 when he was, what, 27, 28? I, think so. checks out. I vaguely remember him. I was a reporter here then. Uh, he said he can't wait to see what lawsuits the county winds up in next. And uh, just me personally on the pay, I can't remember what Eric Martin made, but I did expect it was going to be higher. I mean, those admin positions can can pay a lot. So yeah. uh, it took a while to announce. I figured it might be overpay, but um, yeah, I included some of his other benefits in there as well. Uh, do you want to cover any other new stuff that I didn't have on the list before we go to break? Uh, it's hot as hell out there. Uh, if you consider that a curse word, I'm sorry, but I'm saying it in the literal sense. Um, so burn ban, total burn ban in Lewis County. Pretty much the same in Thurston County. DNR says don't burn in the forests. Uh, I saw former sports editor Eric Trent shared a photo from a fire district sign that said don't light anything, don't even fart. And I thought that was pretty funny. Good. Uh, he's pretty good with the memes. Um, and then I guess the rest we could talk about at the end when we talk about what's going to be in the next paper. All right. We'll be right back. Hi, this is Jacek from Summit Funding. Here's what a recent client is saying about us. Hi, this is Chad Taylor. Have you been thinking about purchasing or refinancing your current home? The team at Summit Funding is the best in class. Looking for a conventional FHA, VA, USDA, jumbo, or even a reverse mortgage? Trust the team at Summit Funding. Corley and I did, and we couldn't be happier. Thank you to all of our past clients. If you have any questions, give us a call at 360-330-4037. All right, we're back. It's time for segments. First up, as always, is Tales from the Ticks page. And John McCroskey has graced the opinion page with a column titled The Trial of Two Dogs for Saga and What It Means for Justice. I regret to inform you that John McCroskey is back to glancing at the front page, and he is not impressed by what he almost read. Oh, come on. He thought the name Two Dogs was funny, and he was shocked, shocked that a gruesome murder could happen here. Writing, back in my day, we ruled it a suicide, evidence be damned, and went about our lives like men. Oh, that's, that's not right, man. He also gets into the senior center hubbub, and this passage kind of sums up the entire McCroskey experience. <clears throat> Turns out I was right, and last Tuesday's edition of the Chronicle reported there was a protest by seniors who were upset. I have not read the full article in Senior Dynamics, but based on the board president's comments, she felt the opinion piece didn't report the whole story. I don't know if that's the case or not. He's really just couching all of this on having not done any homework well, whatsoever. It's hard to get your hands on a copy of Senior Dynamics. We did put the, the post with the story, though, so it should be there. And then he writes, But I'm white, heterosexual, married to a woman Christian who tries to treat everybody with respect who doesn't start a conversation about being offended by some perceived slight. Um, sir, you started this section off your column, off section of your column, being offended by a senior center, using the word inclusive in a story you just admitted to having not read. Being offended by some perceived slight could be the headline to every column you've written since 2019, except for anything about the sheriff's office, in which your take is, quote, it's not my place to weigh in on the guy doing the job you remember me from. Uh, far too harsh on McCroskey, in my opinion. He's weighed in on the Aaron Christensen case, I think, on two different occasions, saying there should be additional information. He almost put, put both out. feet on the scale. He, he, he clearly stated the sheriff's office needs to be more transparent and release more information about how we got to that point. Uh, furthermore, I think John McCroskey is a beloved columnist to many of our readers, a hated by many. Yes, he's aware of that too, I think. Um, but he definitely stirs up opinion. Um, and we don't get a weekly column from him anymore. He's welcome to write them weekly. He's just kind of been sending them occasionally, but I appreciated it. And I appreciated his insight, um, just from a law enforcement perspective. Cause I think as we discussed, we were all a bit surprised that two dogs for saga is true found not guilty considering the facts that we heard. Um, but uh, uh, Judge Toynbee, um, who McCroskey talks about working with, I believe as a deputy prosecutor, and he just kind of vouched for him and said, you know, be happy that you're in a country that does require um, beyond a reasonable doubt, which is the hardest bar to reach because there's many countries that don't. There was some insight in there. Uh, I get, you know, your ongoing attacks on Mr. McCroskey, but I don't think he'll ever hear any of them, so... <laughs> I don't think he will either. I don't know. He might, though, because he referenced Facebook comments in his, his post, oh, well. and this podcast does get, get shared there from time to time. Uh, and then the other column I had on the list was Brian Mickey's The Further Adventures of the Rest of Lewis County. He talked about Best of Lewis County last week and his spinoff, The Rest of Lewis County, and he has some honorees for it. 
Uh, he's got the rest of South Lewis County, the Gospador Monuments. Remember those? Pretty tall. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Little Falls of Vader. It's a park. Vader also used to be called Little Falls. And the Roosters of Eggtown. Yeah. Which are some colorful roosters kind of stuck around town. Large, yeah, large rooster monuments. Mm-hmm. I thought that was just fine. We also had some letters. Uh, May Princess Napa Wine a Live On was one of them from Bob Bozarth. Uh-huh. Uh, we had uh, thoughts on a columnist Joe Kent interview, which was from the gentleman who arranged the interview with uh, Julie McDonald, which has also created lots of debate. Oh, um, I've heard... Rational, I'm sure. Well, <laughs> I've heard criticism because... Julie McDonald, while a Republican, is is known to not be a Trump fan, and I think she's called Joe Kent a baby Trumper on occasion. Um, and uh, anyways, it ran in all three of our papers, uh, The Reflector, NVN, and The Chronicle. So I've gotten a fair amount of feedback, and one of them was super upset the other day that we were giving him a positive light uh, that was in the NVN. I don't think that person read the story. Yeah. Um, and then others just very supportive. He obviously has a very strong backing, not strong enough to defeat MGP in the general last time. But uh, we'll see you again next year. If only he had some policy. Uh, yeah. Well, I mean, a lot of his policy was discussed. If you haven't read the Julie McDonald uh, column, I strongly encourage you to do so. It's in three parts at cronline.com slash opinion. You can find it. Um, or just by searching McDonald, it'll pop up too. Um but she does take a critical view of him. And I had a lot of people saying, this is lopsided, unfair, biased journalism. And I'm just like, ma'am, it's the, the opinion, opinion page. page. Like, he knew he was talking. It's not that Joe Kent was, like, you know, didn't know what he was walking into. She's been very, very vocal and clear with her views on what she thinks about him, MAGA, and Donald Trump, and the whole thing. So, um, Also, if you're looking for clear, unbiased truth, and you, you go to a Joe Kent interview to find it... Yeah. You're going to run into some problems. I do give Joe Kent that he's very accessible. That, that, that's, that is true. And I'm sure it'll be closer to election season. You see him virtually everywhere. And we have, again, three papers in the 3rd Congressional District. So there's a lot of events for him to pop at. And he's, he's often there. Yeah. Well, he doesn't have a lot going on. Uh, Sirens Banger of the Week. The headline for this one was just naked female and duct tape. And I thought I'd mixed up my search history with the Sirens oh, tab. Oh, jeez. Uh, officers lewd. responded to a report of a naked female who was wrapping herself in duct tape near the outlet stores on Thursday. Officers checked the area, but were unable to locate the female. And you know they ignored several armed robbery and high-speed traffic fatality and homicide calls to keep looking. Shocking. Couldn't track her down. Man, just hate the cops, don't you, Aaron? I mean, come on. If it would have been a reporter gone looking, I would have made the same joke. I mean, it was kind of a concerning call. I mean, what? I mean, I don't know. If I see a naked woman in duct tape, I'm not going to just assume she's doing it to herself. You know what I mean? That's yeah, how I, when I first read that, it was like, that. I, am I reading that right? Or would have stopped and pulled uh, over and take on Facebook Live. And This isn't really Sirens Banger of the Week at all. It's just Sirens related, or actually directly Sirens. Um, I was mentioning to you moments ago how... Um, the state courts have approved the new um, Centralia law that limits how long you can park an RV on a city street to, I believe, 16 hours, um, and then also bans camping on city property. And that happened on Friday, according to a news release from Stacey, Chief Stacy Denham over at the, uh, the Centralia Police Department. And then uh, we just, on Monday, which would have been reports from Saturday, Sunday, and Monday morning, just a slew of reports uh, a lot, lot like this. A homeless man who was originally camping on the sidewalk on East Main Street was moved along. The homeless man reportedly camping in his vehicle on city streets was given a warning. Um, and there's about 10 of those. So it looks like the Centralia Police Department has gone straight to enforcing that, which is no surprise. It is the law they pushed for. Do you think they were standing behind cars with like a, like a stopwatch? Uh, the, for the 16 hours? <laughs> yes. I don't think so. I really don't. They also have been clear that they want to try their best, or I should say Denim has been clear. He wants to try his best to point people to resources. It's not about going out and citing a bunch of people who may not be able to even pay the fine. Um, so, uh, But yeah, it'll be interesting to see. It's kind of like the drug law change. You just end up seeing new changes in the in sirens, police reports, anytime there's a change in law. Yeah. Um, it's interesting to me. Also had another appearance of West Reynolds Avenue in Sirens, so we can expect a letter from the angry, anonymous Reynolds Road mm. uh, resident. He sent, oh, dozens over the years. Uh, anytime we put West Reynolds Avenue, 
the keyword being West there, he gets very angry because it's not a real place, according to him. It's not on the it's not on the map. Well, you know. But that's what the police call it. So West Reynolds Avenue, baby. Uh let's see. People's champion of the week, Jeff Goldblum or the fair? Um, oh man, well if we knew who Little Miss Friendly was, it would have to be Little Miss Friendly, but we're recording this at five twenty and it's not until six that that gets announced. Um, so I think, uh, I think Jeff Goldblum and also the people who shared their photos of Jeff Goldblum with us, they didn't, they didn't just keep it for themselves. They shared it with everyone. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good one. Uh, Facebook comments of the week. Yeah. There was, uh, I believe you reshared a post from Thurston County Sheriff Derek Sanders about a podcast he appeared on. And the first commenter says, yelling and screaming sounds like a deputy out of control. And then Sanders responds, Judy, you're more than welcome to come join our agency and show us, quote, out of control deputies how to deal with large disturbances by ourselves without yelling or screaming at anyone. But first we'll have to pass the background, then the academy, then the field training. Then you can come work a district by yourself in the middle of nowhere. And you can directly apply the practice of never raising your voice with aggressive, uncooperative groups of people. That was a good comeback. He's the most online sheriff I've He's ever very experienced. Online. I can't wait till he spot checks us sometime. Uh, when I think it was Cairo, I'm pretty sure it was Cairo. They released the video of his crash. I think back in April, where uh, he just had a crash. I think it was out towards Yelm. Um, and the caption for the video was like, uh, "Sheriff Sanders comes speeding down," and like I guess he was going ten miles over. Mm-hmm. And so he sh- reshared that and had like funny comments about the sheriff speeding and going ten over. But there's yeah. always a chance if you post about him that he's going to comment on it. He's <laughs> if you write Derek Sanders three times in a Facebook post, he'll, he'll show up. He'll show up. I think. Uh, oh, I think our friend Bill Saran out in Packwood called him out as a publicity hound in the comments at one point. Well, you know, I mean, that's kind of part of the job. At least it's good publicity. But then I think he later shared a picture of himself with a dog, and re- re- the caption was just publicity hound. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, he's even, like, vague, vague responding to, to yeah, comments. He's, he's good. Uh, on a story about a runaway tortoise in Yakima, this commenter writes, There is a tortoise in the Capitol Forest area. It was last seen on Cedar Creek Road. It's huge. What? Why are you not out there covering I it? Need to. Thank Find you. It. Thank you for the tip. It doesn't move fast. It's a tortoise. Uh, can a tortoise live outside here? I don't think in the winter. Think so maybe they need water. Man, that's that's very interesting. That's like that massive mountain goat out in Morton. Yeah, like polar bear sized mountain goat. That's it was the size of an elephant. But, <laughs> oh really? <laughs> it, was, it, was, it was huge, <laughs> man. I know you don't believe animals exist in the wild. As I don't is. believe five ton mountain goats exist in Packwood. No. Yeah, you were ranting about how birds weren't real during the break. So yeah, stand by that. Every time you see them perched on a uh, like phone line, you know what they're doing? Watching you recharging. Ah, uh, that makes that makes good sense. Uh, on a fire warning post, somebody writes: "There is a strong smell of smoke from someone currently burning in the area of North Pearl and Carson Street in Centralia. So worried it might get out of hand." Sir, can you tell me what is at the corner of North Pearl and Carson Street in Centralia? What is it? A big T's barbecue. <laughs> <laughs> that is pretty funny. Yeah, I should know that. That's, that's the neighborhood. Yeah, that's yeah. pretty good. Everyone was complaining. I was among them, wondering where the smoke came. I kind of like felt like it appeared out of nowhere. Um, when, what day was that? On Saturday, Sunday? It started smelling like fire outside. Yeah. And so we all did that, you know tried and true dance of jumping on Facebook and saying, smells like fire. Anybody know where it's at? And then everybody guesses a hundred different things that it could be. And then the National Weather Service said the next day it was coming from the North Cascades, I believe. Oh, okay. They could keep their smoke up there. Thank you very much. Uh, on a repost of some old Loggers Jubilee lawnmower races photos, this commenter said, you're a day late with your story. The races were last night. I think it was sharing a history thing, right? It was a history. They oh. were black and white. And we were live at those races. Yeah. We did those races live on Facebook. Come on, my man. Uh, let's see. Those and lawnmower the- races were awesome, by the way. Did you watch it? I did not, but they looked really cool. I always imagined that the lawnmower races were just like not souped up lawnmowers. Oh, they soup them up. Yeah, those things were flying. And the crowd looked fun. There was a beer garden. Yeah. Uh, Jared got some good photos. I think I'm going to that next year if I can pull it off. I think all of... I, you know what? I would feel okay going to Morton now. Yeah, it looked yeah. like a lot of fun. Uh, actually, I have a standing offer from somebody in Morton that if we ever want to go out there, he'll hook it up. So, Well, we should do that next year then. This was the most coverage we've done for the Loggers Jubilee in a long time. Jared and Isabel were out there for the lawnmower races, came back for the parade. We got the bed races and then went back on Sunday and got more coverage from Owen Sexton. 
on the final day of the logging. So, yeah, it was a good time. Top top five local festival. Maybe even top three. Yeah, that's good. Um, should we should 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 we announce the other festival news? Not yet. Okay. Not yet. Okay. Uh, I haven't responded to the email yet, but she's a podcast listener. So. Oh yeah. You, well, I mean, we're going to be in. We'll just leave it vague like that. Okay. All right. Uh, there's a lot of comments on the Reynolds development that nobody wants, but my favorite <laughs> was this one that says, "It shows that the B Wagner Group owns the property." I googled them and nothing comes up, but the Wagner Group comes up as Russian based. Don't know if anything there is connected to the B Wagner Group. The records on PATS don't show what year they purchased. I'm still going to research. Ma'am, I do not believe the Wagner Group has purchased land on Reynolds Road. And Putin didn't think they would mark John Moscow either, Aaron. <laughs> don't underestimate the <laughs> Wagner Group. Now, you know what? As a, as a NIMBY to that project, that sounds like something that should be shouted at the meeting. <laughs> like, do you guys know what the Wagner Group does? Have you seen their work in Africa? Yeah. You want you that, that in Australia? Russians. <laughs> exactly. Uh. Um, I, I do look forward to the NIMBY meetings on that, and I do have to reiterate, I jokingly say I'm an NIMBY on this, but we will cover it fairly, as we have so far. Yeah. But I enjoyed being a reporter back before I really even knew what a NIMBY was. Just the claims that get shouted out when you get a large group of people that don't want something. Like, there's always, like, the core central ones that want to stick to, like, the main one. Like, you know, this is going to cause flooding. But then you'll get somebody else just scream out, and what about the salamanders? <laughs> like, yeah. It's just random stuff. I love it. Uh, and then there's one other, there's a whole bunch of my hat on here, but I'm only going to read one more. This guy says with the El Nino weather pattern returning this winter, we will see how present developments are going to fare with the rain and snow. Of course, I am too smart to continue living in this floodplain any longer. After 24 years, I have seen what can happen and high ground is calling me. Good. I, <laughs> you think I don't look upon the hills, Aaron? <laughs> Just question like, my lot in like, life. I've watched this place flood for 24 years. So you moved here after the 96 floods. Yeah. And you're like, and now I'm moving up a hill. Look, you I, know, I so good for that. About it. Good for that comment. When I move up on the hill, I'll, I'm going to be just as smug. Yeah. No, well, be nice I'm to ready to look hill. down my hill at all of you. Yeah. Uh, yeah that's a all Chehalis hill. Even. That's what I'm looking for. Oh, really? Just a little slice of heaven. Well, look at you. Just to maybe even upgrade my pool. Look at you, <laughs> moving straight out of Centralia. I will. Tough I'm a, guy. I'm a Centralia man, through and through. I don't know any other way. Uh, what's in the next edition? I guess one just dropped today. Yeah, we had the paper today, um, and then we're already working on the next one, but one that proved popular uh, um, when we, we wrote a brief about it. Friends and family celebrate with new and retiring owners at Appian, Appian Way Hair Care in Centralia. Uh, that was the upset most read story of the day when the brief was published last week on a day where there was a lot of news. So um, they've been cutting and styling hair for over 50 years, so that's probably why. Um, we've got a report from the Onalaska Firefighters Association. They raised $10,000, which is great. Some horrible crime news. I'm not even going to really read it on here. And we got some, we got, uh, it's really hot outside. Got that story. Uh, which always cracks me up, the weather stories. Like, we all do them, but people can just walk outside, right? And be like, man, yeah. it's hot. Mm -hmm. But then they need to look at their phone and be like, ooh, Chronicle says it's hot out today. <laughs> we should respond accordingly. I went out, and you know what? The newspaper said it was hot. Then I went outside, and God damn it, they got this one right. Uh, there was another report from Isabel from the Dangerous Dog Designation Board. I think I got that wrong. Dangerous Animal Designation Board. Um, Vader Dog ruled not dangerous after biting a neighbor who came inside the gate which, you know, we always root for the dogs in these situations unless yeah. it's, it's egregious. Uh, maybe a Boys and Girls Club of Lewis County coming to Napa Vine, they presented. Um, so that's just a, that's a few of the things. And we'll have, of course, Little Miss Friendly coverage. Okay. Really excited about Little Miss Friendly. Take that very seriously around here. Um, you won't listen to this podcast before it comes out, but it will be done minutes after. We had a high-level meeting today to discuss how quickly we can get this up. Uh, any other fair coverage coming later? No, we're throwing everything we got at Little Miss. <laughs> <laughs> no, George, Jer, uh, Jared was there today. He's got lots of photos and such. Uh, like I said, he and Isabel went to the opening ceremonies, so I imagine we'll have something on that. Later in the week, another favorite, we're going to have the KELA KMNT uh, diaper derby. Oh, uh, one time participant here. I mean, my daughter, anyways. I thought you were going to say you. Just like, <laughs> well, I, I mean, I did. Last I, year, I threw out a diaper and I kicked those kids' ass. I was on one end of the race that she won a heat. 
if you will recall. Um, but that's Thursday in what has become a Chronicle tradition will be covered by our new sports reporter, Dylan Wilhelm, who follows Josh Kirschenbaum, now a sports editor who covered it last year, mm-hmm. and then former sports editor Alec Dietz, who covered it the year before that. So, damn. Yeah, sports reporters covering the Diaper Derby is a new tradition. All right. Uh, in closing, we're sponsored by Summit Funding and the Roof Doctor. Leave a review and rating on Apple Podcast if you want. Makes no difference to me. Thank you for listening, and uh, we'll talk to you next week. When it came hard, yeah, she came.